Jacqueline Backhouse's Men on Boats tells the story of the Powell Geographic Expedition of 1869. It was the first government-sanctioned expedition to study and map the Green and Colorado Rivers. A company of 10 men set out in the Wyoming Territory. A smaller group completed the journey with the first recorded traversal of the Grand Canyon by white men. The casting of these adventurers is against type. In an author's note in the printed text, Backhouse writes, the characters in Men on Boats were historically cisgender white males. The cast should be made up entirely of people who are not. I'm talking about racially diverse actors who are female identifying, trans identifying, gender fluid, and or non-gender conforming. A friend whom I mentioned the play's casting said to me, that sounds like Hamilton. My friend was right, and it's worth noting that Backhouse's play premiered a few months before Hamilton. I applaud the non-traditional casting. The roles of adventurers should be open to anyone, both on stage and in real life. Theater is doing us a service when it expands our notion of what is possible. For the engaging production in Washington University's Edison Theater, director Andrea R. Rice has wisely placed the audience on the stage along with the performers. Men on Boats is an involving story, but it is even more involving if you are close to the action when the crew is rowing their boats, running the rapids, going over waterfalls, and rescuing unfortunate souls who have fallen overboard. Kylia Thompson plays John Wesley Powell, the one-armed naturalist in charge of the expedition. In Thompson's warm portrayal, Paul admirably leads his sometimes recalcitrant crew with encouragement rather than intimidation. Each explorer has a sharply defined personality in the performances by Maddie House Tuck, Madison Lee, Janice Shepard, Lucy Kirk, Sarah James, Sarah Del Carmen Camacho, Naomi Blair, Alicia Duval, and Taya Bokert. Emmett Grossland's scenic design evocatively depicts the canyon walls surrounding the explorers. Dominique Rea Glaros' costumes are grittily realistic. Emily Fry's props design represents the boats with heavy-looking crates, a choice that recognizes the size of vessels laden with more than three tons of food and supplies. Mitchell Maynard's movement coordination, Benjamin Lewis's sound, and Roger Netherton's music all enhance the show. When an explorer falls in the river, Benjamin Gaffney's lighting fills the stage floor with rippling blue light. Sean Savoy's projection design includes even more elaborate visual effects to distinguish scenes on water from those on land. Unfortunately, a technical glitch sank the projections of the performance Bob and I and our videographer Rod Milam attended. The still pictures Washington Youth sent us can't capture the illusion of flowing water the projections were designed to create, but the photographs do capture the patterns projected on the stage floor. I'm told the technical difficulties have been overcome, so the performances this weekend should be even more impressive than the one I thoroughly enjoyed. I did too, and I was very glad to see this play again. Fascinating to watch its action. Yes, it is. I hope you like the reviews on Two on the Isle. You can click here to see other reviews and to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to be reminded immediately after we post. Enjoy the reviews.